All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Mark with Hindsight. And in this episode, I am going to try and upgrade my 1970 Dodge D200 from manual steering to power steering. I purchased a kit off of eBay from CPP. And uh, they, you know, the description says it works for a D100, but everything I've seen and what's under my D200 matches what I would see on a D100. So I purchased this kit. Uh, this is what it came with. I believe this is a um, um, steering column bracket. Um, maybe relocated or something like that. Uh, power steering filter, and then two adapters that I believe are probably for the low pressure. Um, and then this is a D400, I believe, that's on the CPP website. And then pitman arm and bolts. And this kit, you know, doesn't come with the power steering pump. You know, they kind of made, they have two kits available. One is the complete kit and one is this one. This was $5.99. Kind of expensive, but if anybody's priced these steering racks, you know, that's where the money is. So uh, I'm going to attempt to install this kit. I'm going to do it slowly because I want to make sure before I take all these parts off that uh, everything's going to fit. You know, I, I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to need new rag joints, which are up here and, you know, maybe have to do some, some stuff there. Um, I'm going to check the pitman arm before I take anything off so that I can still drive the truck. Um, and then I purchased this, um, off of eBay as well. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's for big block and small block, but it has the extra, uh, belt for power steering. And if you've watched the engine swap that I did, uh, over the holiday break, uh, the engine that I put in has a power steering pump already installed on it. So it has hoses and stuff like that. So I'm hoping I might be able to reuse that stuff. But if not, I'll just have to, you know, figure it out as I go. So I uh, just wanted to give an intro part. So uh, first things first, I'm going to check the pitman arm and see how it compares. All right, so here's the pitman arm. Here's my replacement. Another set of arms. Sorry about that. So I believe that is going to go like that. So that looks right. That looks like that'll work just fine. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is loosen the steering box inside the cab and uh, see if I can get the. Uh, steering column to separate from the steering box. All right, so here's what I'm looking at for the steering box. It's already in it. You can see the rag joint and all that. Uh, I have a feeling, I watched a couple of videos, that's not really as much a tutorial, but just an end result kind of thing. And um, I think the steering column is actually going to uh, move up a little bit into the cab that the replacement power steering box is going to uh, is a little longer but uh, we'll see but everything so far kind of looks like this is going to work uh, let me check that pitman arm okay so that didn't go well um, the bolt that goes through and and make sure that the um, steering column is connected uh, to the steering box. It, I can't, it's stripped, the head is stripped, so I can't get it off. So what I did is I removed these two nuts and I'm gonna separate the rag joint. And hopefully I can then get, uh, pull the steering column back to get it off enough that I can take the steering box out, put it on a bench, 
and either grind and drill or do whatever I need to do. Well, actually, I, I don't even need it anymore. Um, just for future use, I guess. Uh, so, uh, I think that'll work. I think I can separate the rag joint. I mean, that would make sense that I could separate the rag joint since... But does the shaft go all the way through? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> maybe this will... This video will end up on the cutting room floor because it's a stupid one. But it's how I roll. Okay, that was not pretty, but I got it. So I was able to one side slipped, like this side right here doesn't know it. Well, anyway, one side slipped out. And so then I could use uh, the, I know that's not for it, but metal shears and uh, cut one side and then the other side I could pull it back and separate it and then hit it with this because I couldn't get that far in on the other side. So uh, I have separated the rag joint from or the steering column from the steering box. So next is to remove these bolts uh, that have never probably been removed before and the I don't know, steering knuckle and get the steering box out and it is pretty close to disassembly so that's a plus okay so there's the steering box that was in that hole there and connected to that disturbed rag joint up there uh that was no fun but i took this these parts off i loosened this uh, I do have to replace that, but um, I'm probably going to have to do something creative to get that out. But uh, I took all that out before I took the three bolts on the steering box because I wanted something solid. Uh, I don't think these have been taken off before, so that was no fun. No fun at all. But uh, I'm done. I'm done for today. And I'm done with disassembly. So tomorrow, it's Friday, so tomorrow I got all day. Uh, I'm gonna put that steering box on the bench, get that, no, nah, I'm not gonna get the rag joint off. I'm just gonna go put the new box in and set up the arm and then set up the new rag joint that came with the CPP kit. And uh, hopefully tomorrow's gonna be a good day. All right, out with the old, in with the new. I was actually surprised the size isn't too much different. I mean, the new one's actually a little longer, but of course it's power, not manual. But uh, got a new rag joint. So I, I believe I had to get a new one. That This is like a 31 spline or something. I'll, at some point I'll take that one off and just kind of confirm that. But... Um, I'm happy with this route anyway, and then um, I did get the new lines, the ones that were uh, that came with the engine, uh, the power steering lines aren't going to fit. So there is the part number for that um, off the CPP, and the new rag joint. This is all part of the kit. Although I bought it in pieces because uh, I don't, I'm not buying a uh, pump, and I think most of this is on eBay. So, time to put this in, and then uh, I need to figure out which is the best orientation for this so that uh, I can connect it. I got to get the old one off, but I don't want to damage anything because it it moves pretty good. So, moving on. Okay, several hours later, I had to take this off at least four times. Surprised I didn't arc on the starter, but anywho, it is on now, and I had trouble. You know, I first had the rag joint on, and then I, you know, when it was on the bench, I could slide it on nice and easy. I couldn't get them to join, and I might have boogered up the threads or the splines, and then I, I worked on it for far too long. Um, you know, if you look in that hole, it's not perfectly centered. So I don't know if maybe that was part of the problem, but it's in. Uh, it's Everything's tightened. Now I got to 
go inside and try to get everything in the middle. Um, yeah, I guess I'm too late for that. I was thinking I wanted to make sure that the steering box wasn't all to one side. I don't think it's, it is, but I'm going to check. I'm going to turn it right and left to make sure that um, I'm not bottoming out the, the steering box. Okay, so working through my own idiocy, um, I don't have the steering box hooked up yet, so I'm not turning any wheels. So that is why I can turn the steering wheel and make sure I'm in the center of the box. So I was able to do three turns, little over three, so I came back a quarter turn. So I have one and a half. Now I have a little more stops right there. So then I go back one and a half and I can go, is that right? I had it right the first time. Okay, so one and a half. So here's a half, one, and it goes more, fuck. <laughs> Look at me, I can't count the turning of a wheel. All right, let's try this again. So, one and a half. So then I go one and a half, and then I got a little more. So, one and a half. That right there is the center of the um, steering. So now, I straighten out the wheels and I'm still in the center of the steering box and I should be good. Sorry for that moment of lack of intelligence. Okay, progress has been made. I swapped out the arm and tightened up the top bolt here, right there. Um, it's a slip fitting, I believe, because, man, I have that thing super tight. It's not going all the way in. But, you know, that's where I have the, the little angle. So I like that. It looks straight. So I was able to reuse this, uh, put a new pin in. Then I got my fittings that run. Took me a little bit. I had to go online to find um, which one was the high pressure. But then the way the hose comes out, it, it, it's like this, but if I came from the top, it was backwards, right? So I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna leave it this way. I may just get a new hose made or something, um, but I just wanna see if it works, <laughs> to be quite honest. So I went under the motor mount when I really wanted to go over, um, but I couldn't get it twisted enough so that it would fit on there. Like if I came from that side, it was pointed this way and I couldn't really tweak it. Maybe I can, maybe you can twist these, but this seemed the more intuitive way to not to get it to fit and not bend and stress. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I do also, I replaced the, um, you know, I had, a single because um, I had to use the original stuff here to get because um, the this 318 had AC stuff with it so I had to um, swap out the pulley and I, you know went with a double you know, as you see, it's aluminum. I tried to find a factory one. It's like $100 more. This was like 40 some dollars for this aluminum one. And I'm like, it's fine. Uh, I'm not that worried about it not looking original or whatever. So um, I'm going to put some fluid in it and see what it does. See if I finally have power steering. Oh, that would be so wonderful. All right, so here's what it looks like from up top. Um, 
and then the hoses come down, then one goes down, and the low pressure just comes here and clamps on there. So uh, let me go ahead and fill and see what happens. One thing to point out, uh, and I knew this from watching a couple other people on YouTube, uh, the way this setup goes, it, it, you lose, or the steering column comes back at you about an inch, maybe a little more, but uh, it should be fine. All right, so I got the wheels up. I'm trying to kind of get air out of the system. So when everything seems good until you get to the end, it's actually better than it was. Maybe it is getting better, but I mean, I don't know if that's normal. Ignore the horrible item. Um, but I'm gonna, I've been checking the fluid. Yeah, it seems to be getting better. So I'm gonna take it off the, uh, off the jacks and see if it does the same thing with the wheels on the ground. I hope so. Okay. We got back on the ground. Let's see how this works. Please don't make a bunch of noise. You're making a bunch of noise. It's like there's not enough pressure. So after doing some reading and researching and uh, someone kind of said, hey, your belt's not squeaking, right? I'm like, surely it's not the belt. I checked that. It was tight when I installed it, but I checked it and it was loose. So I didn't tighten it well enough. So now I hear some wine. Let's get the parking brake on. But, it's not doing it well right now, but it's been driving great. I haven't had a problem with it. And going down the highway is awesome. It's so much tighter, uh, less steering wheel turn. Uh, I, I'm gonna take it home and I'm gonna lift up the front end and uh, go side to side and get any more air bubbles leaked out or out. Uh, I checked the fluid. Fluid's still up, so I don't think I'm leaking anything. But uh, it's time to drive it. This is the one last thing that makes this truck difficult to drive. So uh, I feel like I am, this was a big deal for me. And I'm going to enjoy this truck a lot more now. All right. So uh, I've been playing around with it. I, uh, like I said, I tightened up the bolt, tightened up the belt with the bolt on the power steering pump, and that has made this the squealing go away. Um, I still have plenty of fluid in here. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. And you know, I can, it's not like crazy easy to do like some vehicles, but oh my God, it is, uh, it is to me well worth the money. I mean, it's, it's a, it's not necessarily a single finger spin of the wheel, but uh, it tracks well down the road. It has a much better, um, much better turning ratio, gear ratio between between the gears. Um, I'm very happy with this product. You know, I'm, I'm been reading about some possible ways to make it a little better. 
um, changing the pulley size. But at this point, if, if it's running the way it is right now, I think I'm going to be good. I, I see no need to um, modify it because if I change the pulley size, then I might have issues with too much pressure um, while going down the highway at 25, 2600 RPMs. So it drives so much better. This, this last test drive was the first time I could actually not have to use two hands on the steering wheel to make sure it's going to track straight. So very pleased and uh, thanks again for watching.